record this as well. Recording in progress. Is that a woman you know? Just streaming on no. Facebook, which is the good news. Just going to turn that off and that Facebook off and that Facebook off so we don't get any little audio complications. I'll even turn my email off for you, Murph, so we don't get any uh, annoying little habits. And I'm Perfect. Just, yeah, well, you know, you and I, the last thing we need is annoying little habits, right? I don't need any distractions, mate, believe me. <laughs> you look distracted enough, Murph. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me just share this on our Methanol Moonshine page as well. Now, I'm assuming that you have this PR person, mate, right, that's uh, going to be doing this live on your Peter Murphy Classic page, on your Race King Speedway page, on the Skagit page. You would possibly think that, maybe, but um, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know um, if I'm sure they were watching, maybe. I don't know. Ah, we'll see. Well, mate, something will happen. Something will be. Yeah. We'll work something out for sure. How, mate? Yeah. I'll, on Fridays we wear red. Please un explain yeah. to me what that means. Um, it's pretty pretty simple. Like red is remember everyone deployed. Um, you oh. know I think. Yeah, I, I had a um, one of my CrossFit coaches was a man who trained Navy SEALs and things like that, and he was um, you know, he's absolutely fitter than fit if you know what i mean um to train those people but um every friday we went there you know you had to wear red and at first i didn't have no idea what it meant you know and he was um pretty gracious to tell me what it was and because i didn't wear wasn't wearing red that day um i had to do 25 of those silly burpee things and so next week i wore red for sure but um um and everyone in the class did just and it just you know pays a little bit of respect for the people that you know, are fighting for us yeah. um, overseas and, and, um, you know, and, and, uh, they sort of get, you know, forgotten about, you know, and we live in a pretty good, you know, Australia and, and America and, you know, New Zealand, the places that we know very well. Yeah. Um, we're very fortunate and, 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 um, to do the things we do. And it's because of these people that have, you know, helped and keep us safe and make this possible. So I always wear red now. Um, why is it, do you think, that we uh, – Anzac Day is coming up later this month, mm -hmm. right? in two weeks' time. It's the singular weekend or singular day even that we really, apart from Remembrance Day, in Australia and New Zealand, we celebrate the military. Why don't we do that better, Murph? And I'm not I'm not being disrespectful to no, no, no. Th those that do love it, but we don't even – it's not even close to what how Americans do this stuff. No, um – I think we get a little bit complacent on the reason, you know, because we are very fortunate in the country, them two countries that we, you know, we live in. Um, but when you, when you, you know, you talk about Anzac, it's like, you know, they, they went to some big, big fights and if it wasn't for them, you know, even this country would be, you know, got to put the hand out and shake the hand for thanking for what they did to, to help them survive, you know? So um, I don't know why we don't, um, you know, probably the same reason we, you know, we struggle getting people to stand for the national anthem in Australia and, and that, you know, so I, I don't know. Um, just a little bit different here, you know, a little bit more patriotic maybe. Um, um, honestly, there's no, I've got no reason to, you know, that I can come up with just, um, it's just yeah. how it is. And I, I don't want to say that Aussies aren't proud, Murph, because we are. No, 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 right? no. There, yeah, there's definitely. no doubt. Um, and I try to explain the difference to Americans when I talk to them about it. I said, don't get me wrong. Like we're yep. fiercely proud of our country, fiercely. But it's nowhere near the hand on your heart, complete silence at a, at a sporting event um, that Americans, it's just a... Well, it's a, it's a culture, right? When you grow up at school there, yeah. it's like, I pledge allegiance to the flag. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, right? right? And I yep, even yep, know that, yep. and I'm an Aussie. So it's it's bred in kids in America from a, from birth. Yeah, you, well, it used to be anyway. I don't know if it's still, yeah. you know, that hard right now, but, it's, um, you know, because you've got to be politically correct for everyone that's here, apparently. Yeah. Um, you know, it, but, it, you know, it's, a, it's always a good thing. Um, when I first started coming over here, you know, and, the, and yet they play the national anthem and, you know, it's pretty cool, like a, a, yeah. the silence, you know, if someone's got their motor run or their generator, they're like, oh, turn that thing off, you know. Yeah. Um, and when they played the Australian one for me or for whoever was there, you know, 
when I was running, it was, um, it made you think about home, you know, and, and you were pretty proud of the fact of where you're from and all that, you know, but, um, yeah. and, and you, you definitely stood up tall and, you know, um, so it, I don't know, it's just a thing that they do and they, and they do it well. Um, I'd like everyone to just let me know whereabouts you're watching from. There's a lot of people who want to say hello to you, but you better say hi to your mum, mate, because she's tuned in already. <laughs> yeah, no, well, you're in trouble too, Wade, let me tell you. She sent me a text this morning. <laughs> well, why? So, uh, not mama's boy, she said. So, um... <laughs> oh. oh, well, I said mummies, not mama. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, thought I'd be in, matter. if there was one thing, as you know, that your mum's always wanted to give me an uppercut for it's the uh, the yeah. one that, you, that your wife doesn't like me saying either but that's yeah that was, yeah. That was old peter murphy that was when the mullet oh, a long time ago there. long time ago yeah. that was mad harry's number four i brought there you up go. number four that was you know mm. so yeah let's Moving mention on. Some, <laughs> some folks that are watching here at the moment got to say hello to doug clark murph yeah, yeah. oh hang on mate yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yes yes most Good iconic man. flagman, Daniel Goldoni from another part of the world that you're. Uh... And uh, you, you mispronounced as Goldini. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He used to race against his dad. Mate. Yeah, he was good. Absolutely. The five, number five car, maybe blue yep. and white when I remember it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Meridel. Now, Meridel is the lady that does the, the lifts, the elevator at Knoxville Raceway. Boy, she okay. has some ups yep. and downs in nationals. And they're just building her really? own massive new elevators, a whole new elevator system at Knoxville. Uh, Tim yeah. Panosh is from Cedar Rapids, tuned in. Grant Boyden, my old sparring partner that called the V8 Ute Series with me back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. My fellow Pelican in the Tower said, go Holden. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dylan Pingelli is watching. Uh, Brian Mathis, my great mate from Oski, uh, who's a diehard. Mm -hmm. You would know Brian and Michelle Mathis yep. very well. Very well. Very well. The rock stars, Leon Claridge, Vanessa Keith Mappy, uh, Cody Prowse, Chris Thurl Russell, Larry English from New Zealand. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very good. Apparently, you got friends over there in New Zealand. I've sure. got a few. I got a few friends in New Zealand, and and I tell you, I love them too. They're pretty good people. So absolutely. Uh, Jake Massara has tuned in from Western Australia as well. Uh, really cool to uh, have him tuned in. Now, Murph, um, we're supposed to be sitting there in, <laughs> I should be hearing pouring rain on the roof of those bleachers right now. Yeah, not today. Tomorrow it's going to be for sure. Today's um, Friday here, obviously, while we're wearing red. But um, yep. we had practice last night um, because we put new clay on us. But, this, but we knew, um, like, I'll turn around here just so you can see if you can see. Yeah. That in the back, that big white round golf giant golf ball thing. Yeah, yeah. That's like the you know the weather station with the like oh. the Doppler radar thing. But this is for California right there, um, you know. And, and I talked to them on Monday uh, of this week, and they said this storm coming. You know, um, on Monday they they said it, it was so far out. It's it's coming quick, and then it slows down, and comes quick, and they said it could come a day before. Saturday and it, but it could come a day after, like on Sunday, and um, and then like about two days ago they said no, <laughs> you're in trouble, mate. You fucking, oh, can, you, can you swear on this thing? I don't know. Oh, you just, again. you just did. So it's all good. Yeah. Um, they said you're in trouble. Like um, you know, it's gonna rain um on Saturday. It's gonna start raining in the morning. Um, it's already windy. Like my flag's straight out right now. Um. You know, ten it, the gusts of wind today are ten to twenty mile an hour. Um, it's going to be the same tomorrow, but um, it's going to start raining in the morning. And at five o'clock, they said that's when you're going to be in trouble, and it's going to maybe rain half an inch, up to half an inch. So, um, you know, uh, people that were going to come here for um, for fan for fan wise or for yeah, um, teams. just drivers, you know, even coming from Sacramento is three hours. It's probably actually four hours from here. Um, and the price of fuel and everything right now, it's, it's every, everyone struggles um, with the price of things over here. Um, so you have to do the right thing and call it off as, you know, when you're, you're pretty well certain. Um, and obviously the, the whole West coast is in trouble again uh, this weekend. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just it hasn't been a good year for racetracks in, in California anyway. Hey, I know there's a young man that you're extremely proud of named Tyler Murphy. He's a junior. Yeah. At the moment, man, I know you're yeah. a fiercely proud dad, mate. Um, and oh, one of yeah, no. 
One of our great uh, mates, yeah. McCarthy, has tuned in as well. And Stu's exactly yep. the same. He's so proud of, of Indiana. And uh, your boys oh, yeah. your boys are a credit to you and Steph. Like, absolute credit to you. Yeah, I heard your um, a little bit of pieces of you and, and Jonathan the other day and and how you, how well, Jonathan claimed that Steph was the one that, you know, why they're so good at whatever, you know. But um, um, maybe that's true. But uh, I think they've both got a part of me that um, – yeah. You know, uh, you know, they're talking about like Tyler's going to be an actor. You know, he's he's just got at a scholarship to Northwestern University in Chicago next year. Um, All right. You know, they they only take two, uh, twelve kids every two years, and he was one of them. So, um, you know, he's my kid. I think he can act, but um, obviously someone else does too. So, um, but I, you know, had a few beers, and man, I'm a pretty good actor too. So, <laughs> um. No, that's so, an imposter. Yeah, no, that's different. Yeah, no, it probably is. I just guess give me some courage, man, and then I can have a go, yeah. you know. So, and then my other boy, well, he's just again, he's nineteen, going on twenty here shortly. Um, and he um just decided to start racing last year, and he's only only done like uh, I think he done sixteen shows total. Um, and um, he almost won a. He almost won a focus midget race at um at Chico. Um, just yeah, he, they're both good. I, I'm I couldn't be prouder of either of them too, and and actually very proud of my wife too because she's a she's um out of control. Um, she's a teacher's aide for deaf children. Um, wow. like I think five or six years old, and then she's also going to college to to get her masters and bachelors in in that that particular deal. So um. You know, and then, then there's me. She's like, she's got three kids. I'm definitely one of them. So um, I just seem to make everyone's life a little bit harder. <laughs> two very Not talented purpose, kids. Just two. Two, Sorry? Two very talented kids and one special needs. It's all right. I understand. I know exactly yes. what you're saying. Yeah, no, that's about right. So Caleb Brooks is asking me a question, and Jonathan Allard was heading there on Thursday, which was cool because I got to ask him about it. He said, can you tell me, ask Pete what he thinks of Ruapuna Speedway? Oh my God. Yeah. That's a great one. Real Puna's. Um, I got to go there probably, um, I'm going to say, was it last year maybe for the NZ title down there and help I was with Jonathan helping him. And, um, um, as far as, um, their idea on how to do things, um, I think a lot can be learned from people in this country even, you know, and, and seeing like a lot, a lot of people, there's things that could be learning from here that you see in, in Australia and New Zealand, there's things in Australia that could be learned from here, obviously. Um, but real Puna, um, they're, they're everything on their social media to the, the way they prepare their track, the shape of their track, the, the things they have going on in the crowd, um, just the, the, the way the facility's made and, and, um, and, and the racing it produces and, and, and they do it in a very timely manner. Um, they, they're just good at doing their shit. So very, very um, hats off to them. Real Puna rocks, apparently. It does, and yes, it does. Some absolute West Coast honey is watching at the moment. Someone named Steph Murphy. Just after we said all those amazing things about her, she just uh, in <laughs> now, so she's missed it. What you have to repeat? Yeah. It. How amazing is she? How did you meet, by the way? Um, I'm not allowed to tell you because um, she will, she will um. Oh. Yeah, but I'll tell you anyway. So. <laughs> oh wow, you're so brave. Yeah, no, I am. I'm a long way away. I'm like any, any of them keyboard warriors, you know, like that uh, can hang shit on anyone from anywhere, you know, like I'm, I'm a, there's a little bit of distance there now between me and her right now. So, um, <laughs> but we, we met at, we met at a, at a racetrack and actually, um, she went to the, to, to the Larry Thunderbolt, you know, 30 minutes up the road from here. Um, yeah. we met there, um, but she hates that coming out because she wasn't one of those girls that went to the races. Um, oh. she was, she was, um, uh, she was just went there with a friend. Her friend was Tamara Tarleton, which was Tommy Tarleton's sister. So oh. Tommy and I were really good friends. And, um, Tommy was one of the best men at my, one of my groomsmen. Um, yeah. And we met that way, but, um, she wasn't a race car fan and anything like that. She was just, um, just happened to be there with Tamara one night and, and we met, you know, and, and it, um, and it, and it went, went in the right direction. She picked up one of the most eligible bachelors in sprint car racing, so that was uh, <laughs> that was quite the uh, quite the find. Although I've got to say, even though I can say this, Murph, you're punching, mate. I just gotta just gotta tell oh, you, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm definitely out of my class. So, <laughs> but what do Americans say? Batting above your average, I think, is the term that they uh, that they yeah, use. Yeah, well, baseball that, term. That sounds about right too, though. So, hey, our but, mate, yeah. our mate Stu McCarthy has been a big part of your Peter Murphy Classic mm-hmm. over the last couple of yep. years. Um, Stu does incredible things with the Gillen uh, Boys Foundation with the muscular dystrophy awareness, um, uh, warnable side of things. Um, the Gillen Boys. What an incredible story. And Stu is such a passionate soldier for, for their cause. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. He got me wearing green one year, like I think it was green shoelaces or something. That Correct. So, um, yeah, no, I wasn't too hard to, you know, there's the thing that um I think most of us forget in, in the position that I'm in, especially is um we have a little bit of, um, it's not hard to, to, to recognize stuff like that, you know, um, you know, for that deal, just wearing green shoelaces, is it, you know, how, how hard is it to do that? It's not hard. Wearing yeah. a red shirt, it's not hard to, to, to show that you, you do have respect for something, you know, um, obviously I was in October, I, I'm always, when I race, I had a pink car for breast cancer awareness. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge, even last year we had a breast cancer awareness night here. And, um, I think we ended up raising like 13,000 on the night. We had a wow. lot of sponsors, good sponsors that, that, just joined in and, and, um, and we helped a, a local Hanford, um, Adventist health, um, go and get some things for, for the ladies that, you know, needed stuff like that. Um, I think we, you know, we do forget that we have power to try and, and create awareness to different things. And, um, there's no, definitely nothing wrong with that. No, absolutely. Um, just, to, we... just to clarify Murph, um, tomorrow night, American time, uh, which is obviously Sunday morning Australian time. You were going to be running the Budweiser King of Beers, Peter Murphy Classic. Um, even though it is brilliant sunshine and not even a cloud in the sky, typical Californian weather, um, yeah. you have been postponed until July 20. Is that correct? Uh, that's what we're trying for, yes. It's, it's, we moved it to that date, um, you know, and we'll see what happens. Um, um, and, and ironically, you know, um, if you know anything about the actual Peter Murphy classic um, and the reason why, but um, I'm a big numbers kind of a person and 11 was a big number of mine for, for whether I was in Australia driving for Barry Lewis or, you know, over here, you know, there's a few numbers that New Zealand was 11. Um, I drove 11 a lot of times over here for different people. Um, and ironically, uh, July 20th is, is uh, 11 years to the day of my crash. So, um, which, you know, just changed, changed the, the world for me and my family. And, um, and it just seemed like, you know, this was a, we were trying to have it tomorrow and that was a good idea, but then something's happened, you know, it's, well, now it's, now it's going to be then. So, um, maybe that's meant to be, you know, and honestly, mm-hmm. um, it shouldn't, shouldn't be raining then, um, but it'll probably be about a thousand eighty degrees. We don't generally don't run in July, but, um, it just seems the right thing to try and do um see what happens but yeah, yeah. um just it's I, I i believe in numbers lining and that there's a number that just lined up 11 years to the day and 11 was a big number in my career so um you know maybe it's meant to be that way yeah um while i'm thinking about it mate um last couple of days um australian speedways lost a, a real matriarch oh. um of the green green family, um, Kathy mm-hmm. Green. Um, yep. I, I don't even know how she kept those four kids under <laughs> line. And I include Kelvin in that bad Santa, as everybody knows him. Um, what a tremendous lady. Like, Kath, she wasn't outspoken. She wasn't like one of those in-your-face kind of people, but she was fiercely proud of all of her family. And Kayla, of course. who was Trevor. She was even proud of Trevor. So. Well, I mean, that's just <laughs> remarkable in itself, wasn't it? She looked yeah. beyond the foibles. Um, what a what a remarkable lady, Murph. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, life's life's not easy. Um, and it seems here, you know, the last year there's seems we seem to be losing some people that you know mean a lot to a lot of people. And you know, you you talk about her, um, which you know I was talking or texting to to Trev. The last couple of nights, just you know, um, it's not easy, and and and, and it is sad, and um, but it it doesn't stop though either. It just keeps you know, life just keeps moving. Um, it has no uh, 
regard for things like this, um, unfortunately. But, you know, it was a sad day for, for Trev and, and Stephen and, and Mouse. And, uh, but it was also probably a good day because um, I, I, I do believe she was struggling a little bit. And, you know, so um, hopefully she's in a better place now. Um, and then and got to mention that, you know, Ashley Smith is a big part of my life over here. Um, you know, he, he lost his dad you know, last week, about a week ago. Uh So, um, you know, things, um, things aren't always easy. So we should, um, yeah, we should just send out a love to, um, Mr. Smith and and Mrs. Green and, and, and the the families that are left behind mouse is just literally tuned in right now. So mouse, um, I just want to say, mate, that we're all, we're all thinking about you and, she was just, a, I love her. She was just a rough diamond, you know. She was just the the boss of the house. She was the kind of boss of the team and she was passionate yeah. about her boys. And, um, yeah. Mate, um, a lot Two of people tuned in, which is very, very cool. Um, let us say hi to my boy, Connor Bear. Connor Orange has just tuned in. Connor's racing uh, with Liam today at Timmis Speedway in their Speedway carts. So, yep. Good to have Connor Bear back. And Murph, he's just become officially a, a licensed real estate agent, Connor. So um, right. he's now in the real estate games. He's going to make more money than any of us oranges. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, he must be the smart one out of it then. So <laughs> You would hope. You would, one of us has got to be smart. Hello to Leroy Redmond, tuned over in Western Australia. Uh, Broomy from Mount Gambia, Andrew Broom. Of course, his boy Mitchell heads up to Lismore in a couple of weeks' time for the Australian Wingless Sprint Championship, which is going to be yeah. mega. Neville Dance is tuned in from Warnable. Always good to catch up with uh, Nev as well. Justin Worthington. So cool. I love the way that this uh, Facebook Live thing works. And Stephen yeah. Green is just tuned in as well. So, Steve-O, we're just talking about your lovely mum. And look at that. Not even a cloud in the sky. There's a couple over there in the background. but There's a couple. Yeah. So, you talked before about driving the Barry Lewis car. Uh, I know yep. that, you know, Stephen Green in particular and, and Trev, because Trev raced for Barry, you know, back in the day over in America, I think, as well as uh, in yep. Australia. So the Lewis yep. family and the Murphys and the the Greens, there's some really, really tight-knit um, relationships in this sport, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Um, You know, we, you were talking about, like, Allard yesterday or the day before. Um, You know, there's so many, you know, cars that we've driven, at, you know, obviously not at the same time, but, you know, it's... um. It's uh, I just say he's following me around. You know that's what I say about him. But um, um, but the, the, the you know, it's changed now. Today it's it's just a little bit different. There's not as many rides now as what there was yep. when I first started coming over here. You know, um, it was like there was more cars here than there were drivers, and then now there's more more drivers than there is cars. And it's a it's a the world's changing. It's a, just a lot tougher um to get secured rides and and do well and and um it, yeah again just the, everything's changing constantly and we have to adapt to it so how is it juggling between your commitments at Skagit and you know you're in two different states i mean what are the logistics when you fly to Skagit how do you do that how long does it take what does a day look like when you when you merge up there? When, I, when i fly it's in a plane generally <laughs> so it's uh, makes life a little bit easy does Kevin um, send the jet or you fly a commercial? No, I got to ride in at one time. Um, we had a outlaw show here, I think two years ago and, and, um, he, uh, turned up to here and, and him and John Hager were both here and, and just to see, you know, how I do things down here, you know, on my own. And, um, but we had a race the next day at, at Skagit. So he's like, come on, let's get in the plane. And we, we drove, um, to Fresno airport, hopped in his little, his little jet thing that, you know, flies, so high up that it's that it's got to have two pilots and it's you know whatever it normally takes me two hours to get from from fresno to seattle this took me two hours just over two hours to get from fresno to the door of my house after driving for 30 minutes so his his plane can definitely um has a little bit of giddy up in it you know so it was um quite the trip um i doubt that many aussies uh see skagit on their radar we all hear about it um, but it's a place that not every Aussie gets to. And I and I'm gonna say to you right now, I'm sure you're gonna say every Aussie should somehow. Yeah, no, should. Um we've got some big races up there this year with, with you know, Dirt Cup, I think this is our fifty third Dirt Cup that's gonna be this year coming. But this is um Skagit's seventieth year. It's our girl's seventy turned seventy years old this year. Um 
she started out, I think it was 1953, maybe something like that. Um, and she's got some good races. Like I said, um, Dirt Cup is this year is a three day event, four tens. We, you know, generally, um, we brought four tens back to that place up there and, um, it pays 62,000 to win. Um, there is lap money. Um, it pays this year, it pays, uh, I believe it pays 3000 to start. Um, if you can make the show. So, um, you know, and generally we get a, a couple of Aussies. We've been getting it. Maybe I think last year we might have had three. So, it, you know, it was pretty good. Um, we need a Kiwi or two to come over. And, um, you know, Jonathan was there. And um, last year was driving the Zero, the Zero, which was sponsored by the Dalton. So um, had a little bit of a cool look to it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we've got the High Limits race this year, which pays 100000 to win. Um, it's a three-day show as well. So there's some. Some big races, and we've got a, a modified, a big IMCA modified uh, race that pays ten thousand to win. Uh, it's a it's five to fifty five because it's a fifty five lap race, and um, it's probably one of the. It's, it, I don't know if it's the highest paying um, modified race in the country, but it's pretty close if it isn't. You know, um, it's funny to me, Murph. There's a lot of words in Australia that have very different meanings in America, and you you know quite a few of them and let's avoid the female body part analogies for this one. But the coolest word in sprint car racing to a racer is a female a fashion apparel. Mm -hmm. What do you call a payout for a sprint car race in America? What does everyone talk about that starts with P be careful. <laughs> I can only think of one and I can't, I'm not allowed to say that one. It's like a handbag. They put women put things in it. You put your money in it. A purse or a yeah, penny purse. Pack? Yes. <laughs> They're always like, "Oh, it's a fifty thousand dollar purse," and I'm like, "Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, no, I'll say, right? I, I don't listen to what they say here a lot. So, <laughs> but but you know what I mean? It's like, wow, it's yeah. just not a very manly word. You know, it's like put some money. No, in it. no, um, no. But um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when in Rome, mate. When in Rome, you got to do it. So. Hey, David Thomas is saying, hey, Peter, hello from, God, I'm going to say this wrong, Matamata? Is that the way you say Matam it? No, Matamata. That's, that's where I live. When, I, when I'm in New Zealand, I live in Matamata. That's where I live. And then if you know anything about the Lord of the Rings, you can, um, you know, look out the, the race shop door and you can throw a rock and go and pick it up, throw it again, and you'd be where they filmed the, the first Lord of the Rings. So yeah. um, pretty cool. I want to say hi to Tanya Walsh. Um, Tanya is tuned in down in Australia. Tanya is going through her um her final round of chemo for the second time. Um, yep. Her 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 lunatic son um, Blake is racing in the Aussie title wingless very soon. In a couple of weeks time, there's going to be a real uh, a real wild card there. And Tanya's recently become a grandma because Carly has given him a beautiful little baby. So Tanya, I just want to yep. say you've got this love, and we know that you're going to be a hundred percent very soon. She's saying hello, Pete. What a legend. I'm only a legend because I believe someone used to feed me at Mount Gambia with like bacon and eggs and stuff like that. So sandwiches like tomato and onion. So I don't know. Someone fed, fed me well. There's a place I really want to go to in New Zealand called Invercargill. Invercargill. And it's yeah. for one reason. And it's it's Bert okay. Munro. Oh, okay. The world's fastest Indian. Uh, that's yep. where he was from. Yep. Although he said Invercargill in the movie with Sir Anthony yeah. Hopkins. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I, I'm not, I get, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I think if you went to real Pune, you're not going to be that far away from it. Definitely yeah, on the right island. I know that. <laughs> huh. Okay. What, what's it been like working with Kevin Redeen, Murph? Because he seems to be a next level operator. Like, um, I mean, massively successful in business, but a, seems to be a very classy individual. Yeah. Um, he definitely comes across that way. Um, He's uh, he he's 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 no different to you or I. Um, he's very except he's got money, more money than us. <laughs> um, he he is very passionate about sprint car racing. Um, I knew him like years and years ago. I raced against him at Skagit, you know, and that was where he first started racing was at Skagit. And 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 listen to the stories that he can tell you about them as, you know, he he drove from Spokane, on a, you know, with an open trailer up there, you know, like. He he he's doing well now, but he didn't. This isn't where he come from. Like he he's done the hard yards to get to where he is, you know. Um, and people, you know, I think 
and and I could be wrong, but people think that you know he's just been given a, a you know silver spoon on that. But um, he's a hard worker, um, and he's worked hard to get to where he is. You know, um, it hasn't been because it was given to him. He worked for everything that he has, and and um, and and obviously, and he, he should be very proud of what he has accomplished. And and anyone that knows him should know these. You know, these are true facts, and um, he's just very fortunate now because he has succeeded and. Um, Life's a little bit easier for him. I'm going to not going to say it's perfect for him. Mm. I don't I don't know, but um, I'm sure he has his dramas like everyone else does. Um, but he's in a in a, in a good spot to where he helps a lot of people. Um, which you know you can't knock a man for that. Um, no. he's helping a lot of young kids go racing. Um, he's helping a lot of older people go racing. You know, with different things. Um, you know the the man obviously has a heart as big as what he is. So um, you know yeah. again hats off to him. So he does well. I'm pretty sure Monica's daughter has just started racing as well, and he just recently yeah. as well. So, and and yeah, you know, she started running a Deming up there, which is just um, you know, it might be like 20 minutes up the road from Skagit. Um, but they've they've started racing, and and yeah. she started running. Um, last week was the first week, and they're probably at the track right now. They're getting ready to go again today. So your New Zealand geography, Murph, you were suggesting that that yeah. Invercargill was only just up the road. David says uh, it's probably it's down the road. 551 kilometers away. Down the road? <laughs> so it's down the down the South Island. I've never I don't, maybe I've been there and I don't even know it. I don't know. Did you um Murph, did you ever race a speed car at Western Springs? No, I never did. Never did. And and there's a thing, um, you know, driving for the Daltons, um, you know, uh, Neil Dalton and Colin Parker, who runs, you know, he's the CEO of the place. That uh, they they have goals, and um, you know, we're fortunate enough. The first time we got to run, we ran third on the North Island, was where they had the the NZ champs, and then um, the next year was on the South Island. We didn't even attempt it. And the next one that was back up there on the North Island, and which I think we won that one. Um, they they get what they want. They you know they set a goal and then they get there, and then well, now what? So. If it wasn't for my crash here, um, our goal was probably not to run in New Zealand that next summer. It was oh. probably to go to – because where the, the Australian title, I think, might have been at Warnable next year. And the goal was because I could run there because I'm Australian. Um, oh. But with a New Zealand car owner, and it would have been the Daltons and, you know, 11NZ or whatever it was and, and um, at that point. And then um, – you know that that was another goal there, and then if if you know the goal was to try and do that there, and or and then down the road with the idea was to come back and drive midgets, you know, and and try and win something there. So um, you know they just they're always resetting their goals, and 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 again, there's nothing wrong with that either. Did you just say that you couldn't race in the NZ title because you're an Aussie? Is that did I misunderstand that? No, 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 no. They, they, in 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 New Zealand, um, you know, you can, and I I ran in two of them because um. They give you a certain amount of meetings. You got to run at least five shows. Back back when I was there, um, running, you had to run at least five shows to be eligible, and then um, then you could have a go. Um, but you know, like in Australia, I I can run in the Australian title because I am Australian, and and um, right. But the idea was to come with a New Zealand car owner and and have oh. a have a shot at. It. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that that makes a bit more sense. I sort of wasn't sure because it's. It's probably a thing, you know, from years ago, Murph, as you know, that Americans can't race in the Australian Sprint Car Championship. And and back yeah. in the day, back in the day, Murph, I understood that because we wanted to see the number one run in Australia, right? Yeah. Because it was a big thing. Maybe not so much yeah. Sydney, but I know in Perth, when the Australian champ, whether that was Gary Brazier at the time or Max Dumsney or yeah. George Patnell yeah. or Gary Rush 10 times, those kind of people, it was a big deal, to see that number one on the tail tank. And that was before the modern era now, Australian champs like Jock Goodger and Marcus Dumsney and Jamie Veal uh, and Lockie McHugh, they travel the nation now. It's it's a lot more traveling. Um, so it's kind of not as relevant as it used to be that we don't want to not see the number because Aussies leave in February, March, April anyway, if they're racing in America. Yep. So the world's changed yep. since that original rule, correct? Yeah, no, it has. Um, um, you know, like I think the midget title over there, you can be an American and run in it. I don't know it, what, what the rules that make it make it so you can do that. Um, I I don't know. Um, 
I, there's two there's two ways to think about it. I, I like the fact that it is just Australian. Um, you know, the classic is basically the other. It, it's the biggest race I, that I know of. You know, in Australia, um, unless they've got something really well good in Perth, which Perth is an amazing place. Um, with Gavin Migro running that deal, like yeah. man, them them cats are really cool. Um, um, but to to I think it's still a not a bad thing to you know to just let's see who's Australians best. You know, but I, I don't know. You can go either way, to me. So I went out to um speaking of Perth, I went out and saw Sean Karen uh, a couple of weeks <laughs> back. Yeah. Um. How does that make you feel? Oh yeah, no, that's the first car I worked on for Steve. Yeah, no, I, I he uh, Sean sent me a bunch of photos and you know every car that uh, obviously from that point on that Steve you know raced, I got to work on it. So it was um it was always cool. Yeah, there you go. You know the appeal of the King. I've really noticed it even more so um, just lately when I put a picture up of these cars. Mm-hmm. I get over a thousand. I think the original um, JPS car has got like 2000 views or something like that. Steve's um, history and his legend hasn't diminished. I mean, people talk a lot about Kyle Larson, I, and Brad Sweet and Donnie shots, yeah. but he's still the, the king, the goat. Yeah, no, he's, um, and the problem that he has is he, he doesn't even, he doesn't realize he never realized, you know, back then, but he really doesn't realize it now, you know, like, you try and get him to come say, oh, no one wants to see me. You know, it's like, well, yes, they do. Like, everyone knows who you are, mate. Like, so, um, but th- that's a good thing about him. You know, he's, um, yeah, humble. He's still, still so humble, you know, for the things that he accomplished. And that, like, when someone else going to do something like that, who knows? Um, yeah. he was just a good guy. He's just always, he's just a good fella. Um, it kind of, it makes me a bit. Um, just want to say a quick hello to my youngest boy Darcy, who's up in Newcastle right now with uh, with Riley. Riley's playing second tier A league, basically NPL soccer now in Newcastle, living up there and living out his dream of uh, hopefully one day playing professional soccer. And Darcy's yeah. up there this weekend with his uh, brothers and sister as well, up there with his mum and grandma and everyone. So hey, Darcy, Drake York is tuned in, who I had the great pleasure of announcing with for the Pro Speed Car Week. Uh, over, I know him well. I know Drake year. well. Does a very good job. He says a lot. We talked about. That's a very American thing that uh, reporters say. Yeah. Um, just looking before um, we were talking about the Kinzer situation. Every year I see him at the Nationals. He walks through the pits. He just walks through the pits. And I just like, no, it's not right. There should be a spotlight. Everywhere he walks, a spotlight should follow him and people should yeah. go, that's the, so king. the thing. Though, he's, not, he's, he's not looking for uh, no, no, attention, like, you know. So, um, yeah, he, he he's just a very humble man for – unless he has a few drinks, then he'll tell you how good he is or was. Um, but he, he's just humble and, and he's just a good – again, he's just a good person. The last couple of days I've caught up with quite a few of your mates, um, you know, Jonathan mm-hmm. Allard, TK. Yep. Um, yep. You know, we've had, we have some other ones lined up that I'll reschedule now to do in July, obviously, when we sure. when we talk about it there. Um but you've got some tremendous buddies in sprint car racing, mate. Like, wow. Uh, yeah, no, I've got some, you know, uh, uh, someone asked, like, obviously I'm not I'm not a rich man from racing or nothing like that. You know, I've done okay. Um, but I'm rich with the people that I've met, you know, and I'm, it doesn't matter where we're talking. We're talking over here. I've got some friends here, but we can go to New Zealand, north or south. Island. i got really good cats there, and then it doesn't matter what state you want to go to in Australia, like, you know, um, life's been good to me, um, and the friends that I've made. So, um, you know, uh, you know, people asked once the other day, some, you know, would you change, you know, how you got to this situation where you are now? I was like, probably not because I'm just pretty fortunate to, you know, my, my wife and my kids and, 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 and the life that I have right now, some days it's not good, but you know, but it's still, I'm, I'm in a good place, you know, and, and just the people I know has just made it even better. Murph, since the um, pandemic, the <laughs> the global view of things has become a lot more cynical, a lot more sarcastic. Um, people are a <laughs> lot more impatient. They're a lot more entitled. Yes. Um, yes. And it's, not, it's not everybody. That, that That's a really no. unfair analogy, right? But yep. you're in an era where you're promoting now in a very... Um, 
difficult to please everybody or impossible to please everybody environment. Yeah, we're doing yeah, this. That's not possible. If you were doing this in the early 2000s or the 90s or the 80s, people would lord you like they do. Remember when Earl Bolton used to walk across the track at Eldora? People were like, Earl, Earl, you know, yeah. like he was, and Ralph Capitani and people like that. Yeah. They weren't yeah. subjected, yeah. They weren't subjected yeah. to this level of public scrutiny uh, yeah. and negativity. So it's really, it's really sad that that's what you have to deal with now. And I know that you struggle with that personally because you've gone yeah. for you know, the, the popular racer and the fun guy to now it's people getting personal with criticism. Yeah. Um, it's like you said, though, um, it's not everyone. It's just a select few. Um, you know, th these are people that probably have, you know, we're talking about rowing a boat. They've probably got two paddles, but only one touches the water. Um, but they're, they're very quick to, if they've got something negative to say, everyone, everyone just says it. Le negativity is so loud um, because they need to be heard for whatever reason when people are happy, they just sort of keep quiet. And, and generally what I've, you know, seen and what I've learned, it's generally like the same, you know, you could probably count them on one hand, same five people roughly give or take um, that have a problem with the world. And it's probably not so much that they've got a problem with me as, you know, they've got a problem with their own life. You know, there's something that's not going well and, and, you know, and I'm just an easy thing, but to point their finger at or yell at or whatever. And, and um, that's unfortunate, but um you know, it, it does make my life a little bit tougher, but, uh, you know, I, I try not to um, listen to it. Um, the, the biggest thing that I've learned is is um, any decision that I make, I've, I've got facts that I've got to know. Th these people might know a fact and they think they've got it all covered and they can, you know, get on here and type their life away and hang shit on me and, and, um, and make them feel good. Um, but the problem is, is I've got to know facts i've got to know if there's five facts i've got to know 10 and my decisions are never made um to for me or to make me better or anything like that. it's it's yeah. i'm all about our sport um and i'm going to swear here again unfortunately but i don't give two fucks what these idiots write about me honestly um they can't drive anyway so they need to you know figure out what they're doing but it, it's it's Every, every decision I make is about our sport. It's not about, you know, making me better. Like I said, it's, just, yeah. it's, it's trying to make us better. And, and, and we're, in a, we're in a tough time right now. Yeah. You, you've said it a couple of times, the world's changing. We have to adapt. Um, we can't do what we've done in the past and think we're going to succeed. We, it's not happening. Um, I think Australia is doing something right to where, you know, the crowds are pretty good at most places there um, that, I, that I've seen over here um in Cal like so let's just talk about california this track here and and skagit something that i really know about here um like this is a fairgrounds so i've got to ask permission to do a lot of things i only get allowed to have so many dates if i have more dates my rent goes up everything's gone up the, the things that people don't understand like to turn the lights on last year the 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 bill for the lights didn't double it tripled no one said, like, are you okay if we, you know, we raise the rates? It's like, no, no, no. They just do it. They just uh, triple, tripled. Um, everything got, has gone up and everyone's, you know, got something to say. And they, But there's so many things you've got to take into consideration. So we have to learn to adapt to what's going on. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I sort of went off the path there. Hanford, Hanford we can seat 4,000. Gadget, we can seat 10, but we can hold 12. So just them two places that, well, why don't you do this here and why don't you do that there? Up there, it's a different world. It, numbers create numbers. Here we don't have the numbers. And then we're in California. Up there, um, the next next dirt track's three hours away. If you, if you went in a circle from here in three hours, there's six, six other dirt tracks. So you have to be trying to be cordial and 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 – you can't just you can't just put on a race, you know. Um, like just look at this weekend. We were going to run tomorrow, but we can't run. So you know because of what's coming. Um, and someone said, "Well, we just go to next weekend." Well, with that becomes problems. Staff is a problem. Um, security yeah. trying to kick them back in is a problem. Ambulance, you've got to book them up. Why? Why is that? Because there's no. They don't have staff. They don't have enough people to do their job. But then there's another race next week up at Merced. Like SECT's running there, Edmund said. 
and Doug Lockwood's a good friend of mine. And um, it, it might be two hours away, maybe. But you can't have a big race here and a big race there. It doesn't work. We 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 we're in California. And we have there's a lot of cats that live here, but how many, there's too many things for them to choose what they want to do. They don't have to go to the races, and and I'm not hanging shit on like flow and stuff like that or whoever. But people have the choice to stay home now, yeah. and then that doesn't help me as a promoter. It doesn't help most promoters anymore. Um, but you can't bitch about it. You've got to figure out what have you got to do to to get more people here. I need people in the stands, and and you know, Skagit has a has a as a it's a more captive audience up there, I believe. Yeah. Um, not that it's easy to get them, but. It's just a little bit different, you know. Um, they're yeah. not the same, you know. There's, there's, you know, they you, like you're talking like a wing and a non-wing sprint car. They're, they're both sprint cars, but they're totally different beasts. And and these are both race tracks, but they're totally different. There's no, there's no comparison between a California track and uh and Skagit. It's Skagit. We're on um, privately. We we own it. Like myself and Kevin and John, we own Skagit Speedway. It's on 158 acres. Here is, you know, it's it's like I said, it's a fairgrounds, and and we're dictated by the the California government what we can and can't do, and, and yeah. they have inspection, whatever. But then you go up there, and then then we've got the the county that have, can tell you you can't plant a tree there, or you got to chop this tree down, or you know, like it's there's you got to have a permit to do it, so many things. So there's nothing easy about what what I've chosen to be a part of, um, but when people you know can get on the computer and, and you know talk shit um yeah and they when they don't know you know they're just proving like mate you're you're an idiot so um but you don't yeah. have the time murph the problem is you don't have the time to explain to each individual person no you don't the intricacies no. of you know what you just said and it's a good mm -hmm. example when you when you see taylor swift has just been to australia right Mm -hmm. Unbelievable yep. phenomenon. I, I'm not a Tay Tay fan, but what she did for community in Australia, like every woman and girl in Australia seemed to be in the zone of the friendship bracelets and dressing up to it. She sold out every arena between Sydney and Melbourne, massive numbers. Yep. People were paying between two hundred and five thousand dollars for tickets. Yet, if you were to add a five dollar admission raise to either one of your venues, there would be some pushback. And I know oh, yeah. let, let's not compare, yeah. let's not compare a once in a lifetime experience like Taylor Swift or pink or, you know, Foo Fighters or kiss or that sort of stuff. Right. But cause people are going to say, but I go to the sprint cars every week, but the reality is a $5 increase Murph in your purse and your gate admission. If you had 2000 people at five bucks, that's ten thousand dollars. It's not ever going to go in your pocket. It's going no, to go. It's going to go into making things make, better. Yes, and that, that's you know down here. This is everything. I, everything that I do get is, is is to put into this place. Um, it's nowhere near where I want it to be. Um, but you know, again, it's like you got to pick your battles and you got to pick what you can and can't do and and what's going to make the biggest difference and and the best difference and the and the safest difference. You know, so um. Again, there's so many things you've got to take into consideration. There's so many facts you've got to know, um, and 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 you know, and no one knows this. But but then again, most people don't care, and that that's okay. They don't have to. Um, it's, it's the biggest, you know, right? Our our diehard fans that have been here forever, unfortunately, you know, they're getting older, and they are passing on, not yes. moving on. They're passing on. Um, so we have to change what we do. And this is just my my thoughts. And, you know, I'm an idiot, but no. we have to change what we do. Um, and even even our formats and stuff, like we've got, to, we've got to keep adapting to because we need the younger generation. The biggest thing that we've got to do is we've got to finish on time. We've got to finish. Like my goal here this year, every time I have a 410 race here, I only have two classes. And I'm trying to be done by 10. Uh, 10 o'clock is when we try to be done by our our curfews, like with the the round here, is like eleven, but I want to be done at nine thirty. And the same as schedule, I want to be done at nine thirty. And people are like, oh, we, you know, we, you, you need more classes in the back gate. It was, yeah, I need to be done on time. I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to make the night go longer and longer so you'll so buy stop, more so beer. Stop there for a second. You just made a really interesting point, Murph. 
it would be easy to load the gate with some bomber classes and fender classes and things like that and, and race saver sprints or 305s and things like that. That would be a financial windfall for you to do that. Yet your focus is on having a more compact show rather than more money. So people- because we're in the entertainment business. We're entertainers. Yeah. We have to entertain. We need people to come and watch this and want to come and do this and be done at 9.30 so they can go to the pits and buy T-shirts from the drivers. These are our stars of the drivers. Yeah. All the drivers, if, if, but if, if, if it finishes after 10 o'clock, everyone's, some people have already gone home. Most have gone home. So, so Murph, a couple, uh, back in uh, October, I, I went back on a really quiet little trip back to the States with Connor, Darcy and Riley. I took them back to, and it was nothing to do with racing. I stayed away from racing, but we were very fortunate. I managed to scab, you know, really cheap tickets to see the, the Bulls play the Mavericks in Dallas. We saw the Dallas Stars play the Bruins in NHL hockey. We saw the Buccaneers uh, play against the Texans in NFL. And was, we saw two college football games. Each entertainment medium was in a two and a half to three hour window maximum. The seating, the arena, the floor show, the announcer, the lighting, the music, the customer experience yep. was so Everything. far. Beyond, and now, it starts from when you park your car. Yeah. From that point to when you get your car to go home, everything in between is part of it. Um, and 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 that's you know we fail we fail to to get I mean, that a lot. Not not everyone. A lot, a no. lot of tracks of you know, but Kendra people in general, said to me. Kendra said to me, and she's right. She said, "Wait, every one of those experiences that you mentioned are owned by billionaires, right? The the team owners are billionaires, and the industry is a billion dollar industry." And I said. I completely understand what she's saying about this, the the venue and the standard of entertainment and the giant screens and all that sort of stuff. But the focus on the spectator was massive. It was like, this is you. You are the most important person outside of the, the, the people, the athletes playing. Now, every promoter in America and in Australia, if they're serious about this industry, they should go and teams should as well. And it should sit there as a spectator and go, how does that relate to what we aren't doing? And the reality is without the arena, just the focus on a short, sharp show with emphasis on the spectator and the family feeling friendly and engaged, that's mm -hmm. the start of it, right? Yep. It is like, um, you know, we had monster trucks here last week. Yeah. The only thing we've got in this year is the monster trucks. Um, but it is a two hour show. Yeah. Like yeah. and it's choreographed. So I'm not saying like we just need to have somewhat more control on the racing somehow. Um I'm not sure how to go about it. Like you look at Monster Energy Motocross, yeah. um, yeah. their heat races, you know, I, I don't I'm just saying two minutes plus a lap. Yeah. Like we the, there's yeah. just I know it doesn't quite play into the what we need for a sprint car race or whatever yeah. because there is crashes and things but you know there's a lot to work out but i'm not saying we need to do that but we need to figure out another way um i believe to if we're going to survive if we want to survive um it's just um it, it's not what it was like we talked about before there was more car owners than there were drivers back when i first come here and now it's not that way but you know and uh, back in the day you know, you look at you know, back in the sixties. This is what we did here. Da, da, da. It's like, well, barely, barely people, barely didn't have a TV, let alone a phone. This is what you, if you, you're sitting here at this place, if you're sitting at Skagit and you're up on the top of the thing, if there's no racing, it's, everyone's on their phone, looking at what's going on at Port Royal. You know what I mean? Like, and the reason why, like you said, instant reason gratification, why, instant. The reason why you're talking about condensing the show and why the Monster Energy Motocross or Supercross events are short and sharp and the Moss Trucks is people's attention span is so short it, now. And, and it is. Especially, you know, I mean, your boys are you know, grown men, young men now and so, and so are my boys, but they're still so phone dependent and they'll just tap, 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 tap content, like literally. And if you look at the engagement on TikTok, and I know you use TikTok, when you look at your engagement on a post, it'll show you how much the attention span drops as your post gets yeah. into a 30 second mark. It, it's for yeah. five or six seconds, it's there, then mm -hmm. 10 seconds, it's there, and then by 30, they're gone. They're not yeah. even watching the whole content. No, that's what we're battling. They, they've seen it and then they got bored. So, 
again, we have to do things just, I'm not saying I know how to, to do it, but we just need to do something. Um, because the light, it, it, you know, I think in general, Speedway is struggling. It is struggling here in California. Um, there's a reason why we don't race every week because we, we don't make it. We don't make any money if we run every week. Oh, I'll go next week and then, you know, uh, or I'll, I'll sit at home and watch it on TV, you know, on, on the computer or whatever. Um, you, you have to make it so it's better. And I don't know, it's just you got to make it more entertaining. That's that's the bottom line. We are in the entertainment business. So what do you do? You've got to shorten yeah, it up. Right. You've got to get people to be able to go home. You got them to go home. If they're here for a two hour period or, you know, worst case scenario, a three hour period, and then they get to go home and then they'll come back next time because it only took this long. So yeah, you know, so um I'm not, I'm not telling you nothing you don't know. The challenge from that, I think, is that spectators and our fans, who are the the ones that love the sport the most, and as Gavin Migros sometimes says, love the sport to death, they are they have a sense of value, a perception of value that a speedway event should run from six o'clock at night till eleven o'clock at night. Five hours is great value, right? And um, Bradley Benson just made a good point here. He goes, "Where else can you take your family out for five plus hours of entertainment for under a hundred bucks?" Now, when you suddenly condense, like High Limit started to do last year in particular, to this show being two and a half, two hours, people go, that's not good value. I'm used to sitting there for five hours because we have this traditional idea. Yeah. The Speedway event was a whole night, right? And this is where our sport hasn't kept pace with these other forms of entertainment. Murph, no. in, in 2001 to 2007, I was very privileged to be able to administrate World Series Sprint Cars you know, with Mandy Searle and with, with Tim McAvaney and a really amazing little team. And in 2007, the Speedway Australia folks, in their wisdom, decided not to award me the, the management rights to World Series again. And it broke my heart. I, I, was, I thought, wow, haven't we proven enough? Like, haven't we done what we need to do to lift this? Uh, why don't you support me instead of cornholing me? Anyway, we didn't get it. And I, and I spat the chewy and walked away. And Mandy Searle immediately picked up the ball and said, I want to promote World, World Series Sprint Cars 360s. And she started the All-Star Series, which then ran, I think, coming up on like 16, 17 seasons, like incredible numbers. She just retired at Easter time at Mildura, right? The series is no yep. longer. And they had this presentation night. And I was driving to get some stuff for the Moonshine Slushies. And I thought... For such a long time, I was so bitter and angry about losing World Series Sprint Cars the way we did. If I hadn't, Mandy Searle would never have created the All-Stars, right? She wouldn't because she would still be trying to make World Series pay like I was. So me losing World Series, us losing World Series, gave birth to the All-Stars for a massive credit to Mandy and her team for 360s. Murph, I'm going to offer you this. Had you not crashed... Had you not nearly lost your life, the sport would not have this remarkably passionate, incredible fucking promoter that's sitting here talking to me right now. And that's the reality. <laughs> I know I swore. Yeah. Yeah, you swore too. So yeah. that's good. Now, now, the now truth, we may... Murph, right? It all happened for a reason. If yeah. you, if you if didn't everything get hurt, does, yeah, no. You'd still be racing. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be I had a plan when I was gonna stop. Um and I probably would have stopped by now. But um, yeah, would you? But yeah, you know, it, it wouldn't have um, you know, like you say, everything happens for a reason, and 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 when that happened, obviously, I didn't know what the reason was. I still don't know if this is the reason. Who knows? Um, but but I I, I like I don't know. I just think there's there's so much we can do, um, to make yeah. make our sport better, and and mm. and you know, I'm not sitting on, you know, the this side of my computer typing about talking about shit about what that guy's doing, I'm having a go. And sometimes it, my goes don't happen, don't, don't work out well. Um, but you know what? I try and just cop it on the chin. If 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 I make a mistake, which, you know, um, as has happened, obviously. Um, but my dad once told me a man who never made a mistake, never made anything. So I'm trying to make something. I just don't know what it is yet. So a difference. That's all I'm trying to do is make a difference. And I want our, our sport to stay and survive. That's what I want. So... You know, it's all you can do. 
I'm proud of you, man. I'm really, I'm really yeah. proud of you, Murph. You and I have been buddies for, you know, like everybody for such a long time since you won that Monday night show at Claremont Speedway back in the day in the, <laughs> in the four car with Fat Rat and, you know, all those kind of yeah, people. Yeah. And yeah, you are, real. you are having a go, Murph. July oh, 20th. Yeah. Budweiser, King of Beers. Now, I love the fact that Budweiser had that old ad. Remember that I love you, man promo that, uh, that Budweiser had no. back in the day? <laughs> you must remember that. Yeah, no, I remember it. The sides is, I reckon Paul Sides, um, yeah, he would have uh, had a few over that. Mate, good I'm luck. Sure. So, when is your next event for um, Hanford for Kings, by the way? Um, I think it's at the end of the month. It's going to be um, a King of Thunder, like 360 show and 305s. And um, I, I'm i not sure we, I think, I'm not sure what the third class is. So we have shows that we have three, which yep. are the quick shows again, though. But then um, we have like a, it might be the, and I can't get their name, Central Valley Mini Stock Association. Maybe it's them. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, but they're, they're starter motor things. And then, you know, um, the 305s, and, um, which are IMCA deal, and then the, then the 360s. Hopefully it's still a quick show. Um, but like I said, every time we have a 410 show, it's it's only two classes, except for when we, we, we're we very fortunate. we got the Outlaws here and the High Limits, and we have um, Legends of Coney Bowl cars with them. And they get to do basically how many laps we want. Um, and again, so we can a little bit more dictate on when the show can actually happen and be done and, and, and hopefully be a quick show. Um, so, you know, that's just our plan is to be done as good as we can, as quick as we can. So, so Skagit is kicking off very soon as well because I got the email from Lisa yep. to say hurry up and make the ads. So, um, yep. um, it's, uh, it's May 4th. Is our first show there the week before we practice? Yes, it's Star Wars night. May the fourth be with you and all that kind of stuff. Um, we hope hopefully we're going to have some um, people dressed up like you know, nice stormtroopers and things like that. You know, um, you could almost be Obi Wan Kenobi, Murph. Yeah, I don't know about that, but anyway, <laughs> um, it, it'll be again. Um, we're in a position up there to where we can we can ch- do things a little bit differently. Um, and that's our goal is to do it differently and, and, um, um, and make it more entertaining, you know, so it's whatever we can do. Awesome. Awesome to catch up. we got mum's seal of approval. It says down the bottom, it says what an excellent interview hats off <laughs> to both of you. So thanks, Mrs. Murph. I appreciate it. It's good to catch it's up. Not gonna hit you. Disappointed not about gonna hit you now. tomorrow <laughs> night. Well, she will, but disappointed yeah. about tomorrow night for you, but, um, get yeah, someone uh, to you. I know you'll feel better. Yeah, no, I got some of that at home, so I'll be good. So, be safe. Feel Give my love to Steph and the boys, and um, we'll talk again as soon as we get towards the the build up. And um, I'm proud of you, mate. Just want to remind you. No okay? I appreciate it. Yeah, very, very, very appreciative. Thank F you. the haters. Ah, oh, yeah, no, all good. Don't <laughs> say the F bomb again in front of mum. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Cheers, mate. See you, buddy.